Welcome guys, it's Krista Tyus here. And in today's video, I wanna talk about some misconceptions and mistakes that you don't want to make when you are starting your tax business. So welcome if you are new to me, my name is Krista. I am an enroll agent by the Internal Revenue Service and I also teach tax professionals, bookkeepers, accountants, CPAs, and financial coaches on how to use social media to get more tax and bookkeeping clients consistently with my program, Tax and Accounting Clients On Demand. So I wanna actually walk back down memory lane and talk about some of the mistakes that I made when I started my tax business, some misconceptions that, you know, I, that really caused me a lot of heartbreak and pain. So my intention is to really give you guys, um, you know, these things to avoid or these misconceptions um, to avoid so your journey can be a lot easier. You don't have to go through the heartbreak and pain that I went through and that I really wish that I had this information when I first started several years ago. So if you are new to me and you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button. Come on, join the community. Um, welcome to the family. All right, so let's get into the misconceptions and mistakes to avoid when you are starting your tax business. So number one, the biggest misconception that I thought was I had to have a traditional office. Now, mind you, I started my tax business back in 2012. And of course, you see big brands such as H&R Block or Liberty Tax or Jackson Hewitt. You even see other mom and pop tax offices. And you see that they all have their own storefront. Like these were individual storefronts. Maybe there were storefronts in a strip mall or maybe in an actual mall, but they had some sort of real estate and because I felt like I had to have a traditional office to be taken seriously um, to really be professional it caused me a lot of heartbreak and pain so here's why one to rent out a traditional office space like that is not cheap and taxes if you are just going into it for the sole purposes of just working from january to april you are going to have a hard time because you have to pay rent for the entire year now there are some considerations you might be able to negotiate a short-term lease but who wants to do that because you're gonna have to move every single year right so if you negotiate a short-term lease every tax season you have to find new real estate you have to find a new office which is a headache your clients are gonna get confused so you are really stuck with a a year lease paying a year's worth of real estate for a business that you are only operating for a third of the year, right? So for, you know, um, a quarter of the year, what have you. So you want to save yourself a lot of heartbreak and pain. If this is your first couple of years in business, you do not need to go the traditional route and get a traditional brick and mortar. You can do one or two options. One, have a virtual tax business, tax and bookkeeping business. Um, I had to train my clients to work virtual because a lot of people, they come to me and they say, well, Krista, how do people trust you virtually? You know, how do people just send over their 1099s or their W-2s? Um, once you have a process and you have a system on how you're actually onboarding clients, that in itself builds up credibility with potential prospects. And then two, if you already have an existing clientele, you have to train them on sending over their documents electronically. You have to coach them through that process. So for years, I had a traditional space, caused me a lot of heartbreak and pain because I was shelving out thousands of thousands of dollars every single year. And I got to a point where I'm like, I'm gonna go virtual and I literally emailed, I called, I text every last one of my clients and I said, this is how I'm doing business, I'm virtual, this is how you're gonna send me your documents and if you still wanna be a client, you're gonna come on board, you're gonna work how I set precedence over like you're gonna you're gonna work the way I work best right and of course I try to accommodate some people some people prefer you know I had older clientele that didn't feel comfortable or really wasn't computer savvy so they would mail in their tax documents to me 
and I will simply mail back their tax documents. But that was, that wasn't, you're not going to run into a lot of clients like that, that, you know, you do have your older clientele, maybe your retirees that just aren't that savvy, but they do have fax scan. I mean, there are technologies that you can utilize to send and receive source documents. So the very first thing that I would implore you to do is to create your virtual firm. This is where you want to start. You want to get your clients used to sending over their source documents. Um, online. You want to get them in the habit of working virtually with you. They don't have to meet belly to belly with you. They don't have to feel your skin in order for you to provide good service, quality customer care, um, and really for you to help them with tax strategies, right? Help them reduce their tax liability or um, increase their refund with tax strategies. So working virtually would be the very first option that you want to do. The second thing, if by chance you have to have an office, I tell people to really consider a co-working space. So this is where you're actually sharing space with other entrepreneurs, so the cost is a lot less. So you can spend around two, three, maybe $400 per month um, co-working with other entrepreneurs. Maybe it's other you know, tax professionals, maybe it's a, a real estate agent, maybe it's an insurance broker, maybe it's a lawyer, but you wanna find co-working spaces and now they're popping up all over the country because this is a very hot, you know, it, it's it's affordable and people are really starting to understand that they don't need traditional office space anymore. So just to really wrap your head around what I was doing, I was paying $1,000 per month in rent for a storefront plus around $500 just in utilities, you know, having gas, electricity, um, paying for telephone, paying for internet, cable, um, and then just a little maintenance around the office so I was spending anywhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars per month just to have this storefront which is ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous so you're looking at about eighteen to twenty five thousand dollars a year and that's just on a rent okay so my very first tax season my very first tax a year I made my salary that I was making at the bank. So I made about $44,000, $45,000 my very first year in business. I was broke, guys. I was I was practically homeless because, yeah, you make $45,000, but you also have all of these expenses. So really, I only made $12,000 that year. I made about $1,000 a month on average, and that was um, um, poverty level. So you have to think about that. Yeah, you can replace your salary with taxes and bookkeeping, but really you have to make two to three times your salary in order for you to live comfortably because you have to take in consideration business expenses, right? Software, rents, um, supplies, materials. Like even when you're running a virtual office, I st you still have to pay for software. You still have to pay for online platforms that's going to allow you to work efficiently. Okay, but one of the biggest misconceptions is that you need a traditional office, and you do ab you absolutely do not need a traditional office. And please consider just starting completely virtual or a hybrid of virtual and a co-working space that's gonna really allow you to save a lot of money, okay? Now, one of the other misconceptions is I would get walk-in traffic. So not only did I think that you know, having this um, storefront was the best way to go, but I assumed that I was just going to get all of this walk-in traffic. And you guys know my story. I did all of the marketing. The marketing. I did flyers. I did mailers. I had billboards. I had radio ads. I had TV commercials. I even had someone standing outside, shaking a sign, <laughs> trying to wheel people in into my tax business. And yeah, I got a few people to come in, but the amount of walk-in traffic that you do get doesn't justify your overhead. So it's not worth it. At the end of the day, you're more highly leveraged, you know, doing the strategies that I teach you guys online on how to leverage social media, how to leverage Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, on um, LinkedIn, on how to draw in your clients and work from all over, work with people from all over the country. Like the beautiful part about tax business now is that not only do you not need a traditional storefront, but you also aren't limited to just working with people in your area, right? So you don't just have to work with people in your five to 10 mile radius of town. Like I have clients in California, I have clients in Florida, I have clients in New York, and my clients, they are getting clients all over the country as well. So this is the beautiful part about owning and opening up a virtual 
tax and bookkeeping business okay so what else do I have here charging too little right so one of the misconceptions that you know a lot of new startup tax business owners make is that I'm just gonna charge a flat fee right I'm just gonna charge a flat fee of three hundred dollars or one hundred dollars um, I'm just you know I want to be fair to people I, I want to do taxes and I want to be you know the mom and pop that's gonna be fair I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna have exorbitant fees like H&R Block and um, Liberty Tax and what I want to tell you guys is that is the quickest way the second quickest way outside of a traditional office to going broke okay like I had 88 tax clients my very first year in a business and I was charging on average like 75 to like 185 dollars that's not even industry average you go in thinking one with this kind of imposter syndrome like who am I to charge you know several hundred dollars for a tax return I don't know what I'm doing who am I to charge what H&R Block is charging or Liberty Tax or Jackson Hewitt I don't know I'm I'm new so surely I can't go in charging comparable pricing um, you start to think that you don't know enough you start to think that you haven't been business long enough you just aren't worthy to charge as much um, or you want to be fair right and so what I really want to implore you to know is that you are in business to help people and you can't help people if you go out of business right so you need that revenue you need that income you need to be charging your worth your value in order to build a long-term sustainable business so what I tell people is to charge based upon the complexity of the tax return this is when you are charging per form right so if a client has um, a w-2 they have mortgage interest they have maybe a rental property and they have and they're self-employed where are you going to be charging per form that's populated so you're going to be charging for w-2 form you're going to be charging for schedule a for schedule e um, for schedule c and that price tag is what the client has to pay they're paying based upon the complexity on your knowledge on your time on your expertise do not go into this business just charging a flat $100 you're not gonna make any money it's not gonna be worth it right so don't go into this business just charging I'm just gonna charge everyone $300 and I'm gonna make a hundred grand it doesn't work like that you have to charge based upon the complexity of the return based upon per form of the return okay and that's the best way to do it that's that's also fair for the client because if you're charging a flat fee of $100 or $300 and this person has a very simple return they just have one w-2 um, they're a college student maybe um, and they're just getting you know maybe the college tax credit or something like that um, and then you have this other client over here that's schedule C they have earned income tax credit they have the child tax credit you're putting in all of these forms you, you're populating all these credits and deductions you actually using your knowledge to actually help them um, legitimately increase their refund or reduce their tax liability and you're going to charge them the same price as someone that wasn't as complicated it's just not fair and it's not fair for most importantly it's not fair for you as a tax professional so don't think you're going to go into this business and just charge a flat fee it's not wise you will go broke trust me I've been there okay um, what's the next thing that I, I have on here okay so waiting too long to get your EFIN a lot of people don't know that it takes the IRS Internal Revenue Service a few months to issue an EFIN. Now, there are people that's going to go, oh, I got my EFIN back in a few weeks. On average, it takes them like 8, 10, 12 weeks, like three months to give you your EFIN. So you do not want to wait at the last minute to apply for your EFIN. And your EFIN is your electronic filing identification number. This is the number that you need in order to electronically file tax returns to the Internal Revenue Service. And this number you also need in order to purchase a professional tax software. So um, I think the IRS on their website now, you can start to apply for your EFIN or your PTIN um, in October of this year. So I would definitely implore you as soon as October comes around, or I would just implore you now to go to the irs.gov website. If you're thinking about starting this business, why wait? You know, don't wait until November to start your tax business. You know, I know things happen, you know, so if you're watching this in November, no worries. I know things happen, but 
do this as soon as possible you know incorporate your business if this is a business you're going to be doing legitimately you want to incorporate your business um, you want to get your business incorporated with your state you want to get your EIN you want to open up your business bank account you know you don't want to commingle your money so you want to have a dedicated tax business account and then your personal account um, you want to go ahead and apply for your P10 your prepared tax identification number with the Internal Revenue Service you want to get your EFIN which you do have to go through a suitability check so you can't have any felonies on your record you have to be current with your own tax returns in order for you to get this EFIN number um, and it does take you know several weeks for you to get this number back so you don't want to wait to the last minute I know in 2019 there were people that waited um, like October November December to get their EFIN and they didn't get their EFIN until like February March for some people right so they were in a jam they couldn't file taxes professionally because they didn't have their EFIN number right so now they're looking for people that they can come up under their EFIN and that's just a headache you don't want to wait until the last minute you want to make sure that you you really starting this business you're putting yourself on the right foot so don't wait until the last minute to get your EFIN to get your P10 to start your business bank account to get your software you want to get all of that stuff as soon as possible okay now um, what else do I have here so I have here um, waiting no quitting my job too early Ooh, that's a good one so uh, I quit my job before or okay so I quit my job I was working at Chase Bank and I've always before starting my business I was always in banking so I worked at Bank of America for five years um, then I went to Chase Bank and I was a business banker at Chase Bank um, before I started my tax and bookkeeping business and I remember just feeling micromanaged Ooh, I just didn't like the corporate politics now I knew how to play corporate politics right because I had gotten a raise in promotion every year I was in corporate America so I knew how to play the game I knew how to do good work you know I knew how to exceed expectations um, for my clients um, I knew sales and I liked sales so I was a good salesperson um, but I felt like my upward mobility in corporate was just limited you know I felt stagnant you know I was like okay Krista you can become a branch manager you can become a district manager you can work your way up to VP and for what for you know a hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary and I make that now in six months of the year right so it's like I felt like I just had a cap on my income a cap on my potential and so I made a decision to just quit my job and so here's what happened this is a little personal story um, I was in a relationship um, me and my um, children's dad were together we have two beautiful children together and you know I went to him and I just told him that I really wanted to start this business um, that I really wanted his support in starting this business and unfortunately we didn't work out <laughs> during that time so we ended up breaking up and because i thought you know i had his support and i thought that we were going to do this together i had already made a decision to quit my job because i thought i had a second source of income for my household um and i thought i had that level of support that would allow me a few months to build up my tax business in order to um start to contribute back to the household again right because we both were contributing to our household so make a long story short you know now i quit my job I don't have a savings you know I didn't have any clients um, tax season hadn't even started yet it was like the beginning of January so I'm start I'm like I'm just out there right with no safety net no cushion no anything and I wouldn't I wouldn't put that on my worst enemy like I tell people all the time you want to bridge a gap you don't want to just quit your job cold turkey um, I know working a nine-to-five can be very frustrating while you're trying to build this business on the side it can be overwhelming you can get discouraged because you're like you know I'm working eight hours I have a family you know that I have to take care of and I barely have time to for myself so I get it guys it's hard but what I tell people is you want to build the build the bridge and so this is why I really advocate bookkeeping services because that's going to allow you that um, residual income to come in you get a few bookkeeping clients paying you let's just say you get three bookkeeping clients paying you each a thousand dollars a piece that's three grand for most people that I know three thousand dollars per month would take care of their rent or mortgage um, and then basic necessities for their household their utilities and food on the table if you have that now the money that you make in tax season now you're not stressed out now you're not you know putting yourself in a bind and that's what I don't want you guys to do so a lot 
lot of people look at the tax season money that they're making, but they really negate the fact that you have to budget that out for an entire year. And if you quit your job too soon and you don't have support, like a husband or a wife that's understanding, that's going to help bridge some of those months, you are going to find yourself looking for a job come June or July. Um, you're going to be broke. You're going to be miserable because that money, it's, 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 you're not budgeting. Let's just say you make $40,000 for tax season. You know, you didn't really make 40,000, right? Because you have your overhead, you have expenses, you have the bare necessities that you need in order to survive. So you have to take that into consideration. And, you know, I wouldn't advise quitting your job until you have at least a handful of bookkeeping clients that's bringing in monthly income to you. And tax season money is just extra money, right? It's just extra gravy money because it takes you a few seasons. A few seasons means a few years to actually bring in a six-figure income unless you're purchasing someone's tax client base right or you're purchasing a big brand such as H&R Block you're purchasing you're purchasing someone else's client base you could potentially make six figures your first couple of years in a business but most of you guys are just regular people like me and it takes time to build up a client base it does right even when you hit up family friends even when you do your marketing it takes several months to actually build that up okay so you want to give yourself some grace you don't want to put you or your family in a position where you can't put foot on the table you can't afford your lights you want to be you want to smoothly make that transition so tough out your nine to five job figure out how to work in between your job during tax season build a nest egg build a consistent income and walk away comfortably from your job knowing that you have money in the bank your bills are paid like that's a really good feeling you don't want to leave your job with your back up against the wall i wouldn't recommend it okay and that's what i did and unfortunately i went broke um was homeless with two kids and I don't I want to save you guys a lot of heartbreak and pain okay so guys so those are the tips that I have you know um, the misconceptions or mistakes is that you need a traditional office um, you can't work virtual that you're gonna get all of this this all of this walk-in traffic um, charging too little I'm just gonna go in charging a flat fee don't do it um, waiting too long to actually get your business going your Ethan your pizza your software getting your business incorporated and then finally quitting your job way too early than what you need to um, so I hope this was helpful if you guys have any questions for me drop them below I do want to work with you guys so if you are trying or in the midst of starting your tax and bookkeeping business you need help you want somebody to hold your hand I want to rock out with you I want to help you make six figures in this business help you get those bookkeeping clients help you comfortably walk away from your nine-to-five job and help you have a banger tax season so I'm gonna put some resources below check them out I look forward to talking to you guys soon and have a great rest of your day. Bye.